Our first presentation this morning is the Trusted CI Fellows pan Panel, and our moderator here is Rick Wagner. He's from UC San Diego. He's a pre Principal Research IT Systems Integration Engineer. Welcome, Rick. Hi, and thank you everyone for getting up this morning. Um, those of us on California time know what it's like uh, to be up this early. And it is my great pleasure today to moderate the panel for our 2022 uh, Trusted CI Fellows. Uh, as Jeanette said, I am Rick Wagner um, with a very long job title um, because UCSD went through one of those reorgs um, where everyone had to conform to a job matrix. And I was so special, I got all the adjectives. Okay, so uh, the, this will be very uh, quick in terms of my talking because my role here is solely to frame the stage for uh, you to hear the experiences of the 2022 Trusted CI Fellows. Um, so the fellowship program has been going on now for several years. Uh, the purpose of the program is to empower ambassadors uh, from the science community in terms of their cybersecurity knowledge, their awareness of Trusted CI uh, tools and services with the uh, support for a virtual institute that they attend throughout the year and travel funding, which is very beneficial. Uh, I personally uh, appreciated this to allow me to re-enter re <laughs> my professional life in traveling to Perk, attending this conference, and I'm also going to get at TechX, which supports my role as a board member in, on the CTAB board for in common. So thank you very much to Trusted CI um, for this. Um, these are the panel, uh, the fellows for the last three years. Nominally, they support, uh, they select six a year. It seems to have grown a little bit, which I think is fantastic. Um, perhaps it's just the opportunity to bring more people in uh, with the funding. And I will directly call out the diversity because it is diversity not just in what you think of um, in terms of ethnic or otherwise, it's also the science disciplines, the types of jobs that people hold, and the geographical areas that they come from. They are trying to make sure that they are covering as broad of a scientific community as possible. And um, I see enough old white guys with beards in the mirror, um, so I appreciate the fact that they don't all look like me. Um, so. With that, allow me to introduce the 2022 Trusted CI Fellows. And we will be hearing from their experiences uh, right about now. So uh, Fellows, you should have received an email last night, which I know most of you did, um, with the order they will present in. Um, is Hannah available and online? I am, oh. good morning. Okay, so uh, thank you, Hannah. So, uh, the way this will go is each fellow will have about five minutes to tell you about key elements of their experience with the Trusted CI Fellowship. Um, and uh, it, fellows, if any of you, especially that are online, are, are having any difficulties, we will just move on to the next person um, and pick it up. Uh, we will try to have about five to ten minutes at the end for any questions from the audience. So uh, with that, Hannah, you're up, and uh, Charles, you are on deck. Wonderful. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm Hannah Hiles. I am a research project manager at RENCI, um, which is an organization at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It's been mentioned a couple times over the past two days, which is really exciting to see RENCI represented. Um, and I see that a few of my colleagues are actually going to be a part of today's proceedings, which is also really exciting. Um, I have been thrilled to be a part of this. This is the entire concept of cybersecurity is not something that I ever <laughs> predicted to be part of my professional career path. So being here today, being a part of this cohort has been a remarkable journey. And I am really grateful that uh, a colleague at Renzi mentioned it to me, uh, Laura Christofferson, who was part of a two years ago fellowship. Um, and then applying and going through the process and what the past few months have been like have just been a really remarkable experience. So for me, there are two tremendous takeaways that uh, even now as I'm, I'm still processing what the entire fellowship has been like. Um, and I'm sure that in the coming months, there's gonna be a lot more that, that I settle with and that I continue to think through. But the two ones that have been the largest have been that, um, 
for me, again, I, I don't have a background in cybersecurity. I don't have a background in IT, in comp sci. Um, at the very beginning of this, when I was first hearing about the fellowship uh, and first reading about it and understanding what it was, I had a lot of interest in it immediately. I have personal interest in cybersecurity, but again, nothing in education, nothing at work, even though I work at Renzi and I've had all that personal interest. There's nothing that I've ever done to actually pursue any kind of, of formal or informal training in it. It's just been lots of reading and kind of dabbling in things here and there. So I entered the program and the whole application process with a lot of skepticism. And if I'm being really honest, probably a lot of imposter syndrome <laughs> about uh, how I could even have a role in the cybersecurity community. Um, at the start of the fellowship, when I thought about who I was and what my skills were, uh, what I could offer this community. My thinking was, I have a background in librarianship. I'm coming to the table as a librarian. Uh, at Renzi, I am very user-facing. I'm very stakeholder-facing. I don't interact with technology. I don't interact with hardware. I don't interact with software. I'm not on that side of things at all. Um, and most of what I have been focusing on over the past few years in my career has been uh, interfacing between disparate groups and working to serve as a kind of interpreter or translator to improve processes or systems in some way to facilitate trainings, to write documentation, to do a lot of research about what those problems are that exist in those in-between spaces and help something happen in that kind of space between those. And you know, now it's really clear to me how honestly laughable a lot of that is because after completing or not completing, but at this point in the fellowship and after a lot of the conversations yesterday, it is very obvious to me exactly what role uh, I can fill and what role many other people like me can fill in the cybersecurity community. Um, that even though I'm not coming to the table with very technical skills or any running knowledge of cybersecurity, somebody like me is actually a huge asset and can play an invaluable role in assisting this community and assisting the research communities that I've already been supporting. So for me, one of both the largest challenges and also the largest rewards of this fellowship has been in being taught what my place can be in this community, even though it was not at all immediately clear from the onset what I could even do. And then the second for me is that one of the main um, pitches, I suppose, of the program is the interactions that we will have and the relationships that we will curate with industry specialists in our weekly sessions. But what I have come to realize is that an equally significant asset are the interactions and relationships that are curated with our fellow cohort members, that getting to build relationships with these folks, to hear the questions that they ask, to see the ways that their communities, their projects, their organizations function compared to mine in similar ways, in wildly different ways, um, in so many ways that has almost been more significant than the weekly presentations and Q and A's with industry specialists. Um, and so that really has been one of the most significant parts for me is actually my cohort and getting to sit with them and learn with them and ingest with them. And it's been a remarkable journey and I am so grateful to have gotten to be a part of it with these, these phenomenal people. Thank you, Hannah. And I will definitely affirm the role of Understanding people and having relationships with them, uh, yes, you can absolutely support security um, with that. Uh, Charles, are you ready? I certainly am. Uh, good morning, hey. conference attendees. Uh, and hello to my fellow fellows. Uh, so I am uh, super grateful, uh, <laughs> uh, super grateful to have been a part of uh, the process here. Uh, there have been a number of concrete uh, takeaways that I have, and I, again, I'm very, very grateful 
Uh, one was just the opportunity to say, uh, I would uh, echo what uh, Hannah just said, is that uh, talking with the cohort members. Uh, I've learned so much each week uh, from listening to their perspectives, uh, from an interdisciplinary perspective, from many different uh, vantage points, uh, and that was incredibly helpful to me. Uh, among the other kinds of things that were super helpful was listening to and learning, engaging with uh, the various experts uh, that uh, Diana and the uh, crew were very working hard to bring together uh, each week. And so I was very grateful for that. Uh, and I look back and there have been a number of uh, nice milestones that I was trying to work on uh, that were done uh, because of the invaluable experiences that I had for this program. So let me mention a few of those. Uh, let's say, for instance, I had the uh, support to go to PARC uh, for the conference, and that was extremely, extremely helpful. And one of the things that I was able to do, uh, I was talking with some of the colleagues there, and one of the things that was nice is I uh, worked with Oracle, uh, and they invited me to be a research fellow uh, with their new cloud uh, infrastructure. So now that I can do, my, I can do research uh, on the Oracle cloud, uh, supported by them, uh, for my machine learning analysis and so forth in cybersecurity. Uh, and that probably would never have happened if I had not gone to uh, the PARC conference and had that kind of support. Uh, other fundamental kinds of things that have been very, I'm very, very grateful for that would not have happened otherwise uh, if I wasn't a member of, the, of this group uh, was uh, for me, I, I'm an assistant professor in uh, cybersecurity at Cleveland State University. And so doing these kind of research projects are pretty important for us and getting data, getting really good data in order to uh, conduct high quality, scientifically based uh, kind of research and produce insights is really incredibly important for uh, my career and my uh, profession going forward. So one of the things that was interesting to me was what uh, Indiana University was doing as far as its SOC, its Security Operations Center services for the other NSF uh, entities. And I was able to talk with uh, what they were doing, some really interesting and cre uh, creative research, uh, pushing the frontiers there, but sort of saying, how might I be able to get some data from a SOC uh, that is one of their members? So uh, locally here in Cleveland, we have Case Western Reserve University. Uh, that's where I got my PhD. And they're also a member affiliated with the SOC that uh, Indiana University runs. And so uh, I've been talking with them about getting uh, data. Uh, so that's been super helpful. Uh, and the last thing that I would sort of point to as a concrete milestone uh, that has been helpful for me scientifically uh, as part of my research uh, process is uh, throughout the uh, time I was in the cohort and continue to be in the cohort, I was working on a paper for a, it was a top tier journal. And the basic idea was how to look at uh, universities as uh, they were going through the pandemic, what kind of cybersecurity interventions did they introduce? And then with very often, I'm sure we can all empathize with new interventions, there's often a lot of pushback or uh, the staff isn't into it or whatever. And then part of that process was looking at not only the pushback, but how people were able to strategize and help people to become uh, compliant with the strategies they were doing to protect everybody during the pandemic. So working, uh, I remember I had some interesting conversations at the park conference and other uh, times with my cohort uh, fellows about their experience, their perspectives. And some of those were really, truly uh, formational as far as my perspective on things. So that, uh, that journal article went out, we submitted that uh, at the end of September. And so I sort of saw that as a nice culmination of all the hard work uh, that the fellows had been putting in and that me having the valued opportunity to learn from them. Uh, so I'm super, super grateful uh, from the uh, process. Uh, Diana and the entire uh, team was extremely supportive. Uh, and so I'm very grateful and I'm looking forward to future interactions uh, where I continue to learn and to uh, gain from this uh, experience that I was so lucky to win. So that, uh, so keep up the good work. How's that? Thank you very much, Charles. Um, I do uh, like the idea of the connections being built through the fellows program to allow it to actually influence research. I know that I had a fellow researcher um, in my cohort who is here today. Um, and so we will eventually benefit from that as the research makes its way into practice. So uh, Stephen, you would? Am I on? You're live. Good. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Stephen Strang, and I'm a research development strategist in the Office of the Vice President for Research at the University of Minnesota. 
And I came to Trusted CI uh, from two different directions, actually. Uh, I first uh, entered cybersecurity when I worked for the Food Protection and Defense Institute, which was a Department of Homeland Security funded institute at the University of Minnesota. And uh, I got a chance to work on a project that was looking at the cybersecurity risks in food processing and food manufacturing, you know, primarily from the operational technology side. And, and you should know that I have no technical background at all. I was actually, um, I started there as a, uh, a technical writer and science writer and uh, proposal, develop, proposal developer. Um, but this was just something that was just incredibly fascinating to me. Um, I loved learning about everything that I was involved with on this project. Um, then as our uh, funding from DHS wound down, I transitioned into research development uh, where I um, am essentially helping build the university system's capacity to do more, bigger, more complex research by providing uh, strategic planning and competitive intelligence and uh, proposal development. And it wasn't too long after I started doing that that I began you know, noticing the increase in language about cybersecurity in proposal requirements and terms and terms and conditions. And you know, that pretty quickly led me to discover, to discover Trusted CI and this whole thing called cybersecurity for open science research. And you know, that just seemed really, you, know, you don't really see those two words together very much, cybersecurity and open, right? <laughs> So, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I researched more and, uh, and thought, well, maybe this could, you know, I found the fellows program and thought, well, maybe this could help me help my university, you know, do more of this, more research, bigger, you know, more complex, but do it more securely and help meet, you know, all these new cybersecurity requirements, regulations, compliance regimes that are coming down the pike. Um, so, the, the, the program has been you know, incredibly valuable for me. I mean, one of, the, one of the reasons that I signed up for the fellows program or you know, applied to be in the fellows program was to fill in you know, some basic foundational, foundational cybersecurity knowledge gaps that I had because, you know, as I mentioned, I came into this you know, kind of sideways without any formal training. And, but you know, one of the reasons for some of those gaps was because I thought that there were you know, some particular areas of cybersecurity that really weren't all that interesting to me. Uh, and then we would have a presentation, you know, by somebody on that topic, and they would reveal the true depth of my ignorance by showing me actually how fascinating that particular topic, you know, really was. <laughs> so, you know, thank you to those of you who gave those presentations. Some of you are out here, you know, in the audience and online. Um, and also thank you for making my life much more difficult because now I have that many more things that I feel like I need to you know, learn more about. Um, so uh, I probably had a last point that I was going to make, but I've totally forgot it since I, you know, since I, was, since I, was, since I was up here. So I just want to you know, thank the, uh, oh, no, you know, kind of where, where do I go from here? Or, well, um, that's not really clear. You know, my, uh, my, uh, path, you know, or my role in the cybersecurity field, and also my, you know, university's approach to uh, conducting open science and, you know, complying with cybersecurity um, is still, you know, all under development. Uh, but I can say that, um, you know, thanks to this program, I do now uh, co-chair uh, the university's standing committee on highly restricted data, and I'm, you know, already getting to be in the thick of things when it comes to expanding our you know, currently small footprint in conducting research that involves controlled and classified information, uh, and also our budding efforts to figure out you know, how we're going to comply with you know, CMMC when that comes down the pike. So I just really want to thank the, the program for this opportunity. Um, I especially want to thank my fellow fellows um, you know, not only for everything that I learned from you, but also just for making this one of the most fun professional experiences that I've had in a really long time. So thanks. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Um, and I will iterate uh, on his point. Um, I think many of us recall from the HPC realm 
the competitive aspects that universities looked at um, to start to drive their HPC programs within uh, the, uh, the research world, I strongly suspect that the point that Stephen just made is that universities that stay ahead of the game in terms of providing secure environments um, will have a competitive edge, um, which is why Indiana, with both a large presence in HPC um, and cybersecurity, is probably going to be in the lead for a little while in this realm. So, um, all right. So, uh, Joey, uh, you ready? Well, I'm here. <laughs> Are you ready? I am. I awesome. Am. Good morning, everybody in here, out there, ships at sea, and everybody in between. Um, so my name is Joey Whiteswift. I work at the University of Texas at Dallas. Uh, I support uh, researcher support and our HPC efforts. And my background um, is maybe a little bit closer than, than Stevens with uh, electrical engineering, uh, but. I've always enjoyed solving problems, and I kind of wandered into HPC, and there's plenty of problems to solve. And as I've continued to solve those problems, I realized that more and more of them have to do with security. And so when I saw the opportunity to, to do the trusted CI, um, having done, you know, sort of the anecdotal security pieces, you know, compliance stuff, uh, I figured that, you know, getting some, some formal training and understanding would be really helpful. And um, I'll just say to past Joey, thank you from, fu from future Joey that is now here today. Um, it, it was um, an amazing time. Obviously, a lot of the folks who've gone before me have said a lot of the good points. Um, the cohort made this really fun. All the, all the folks were, were amazing. All the folks out there that, that had all these very detailed, very interesting, and oftentimes, you know, I mean, we were hearing from ISOs. We were hearing from you know, project leads, and we were hearing from the people who who really know what's going on, who really know where things are going, and to get sort of that formal background in governance and training and you know, how to approach problems, how to ask for funding for security, and all these sorts of things that can be really hard to do, uh, you know, learning from them and being able to ask them so many questions and then see them here, which has just been really cool. Um, so for anybody out there who's considering it, I think they said that the, the application is open. Uh, I would recommend it to anybody. Uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing time. Uh, you get so much great training, understanding. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank the AV team back there. So I don't think anybody's done either day for being able to see us and hear us. And, um, <laughs> and I look forward to um, uh, answering any questions anybody has. Um, but going forward, I know that, that um, I'm going to take this training, I'm going to take what I've learned here, the connections I've made both in the cohort as well as the, the folks that, that were doing the phenomenal trainings, and um, just move forward with that with helping our university and continuing to serve on our university's um, cybersecurity advisory board and being able to bring back some of the stuff that I've learned to there from, from a university-wide perspective as well as our group and, and how we do HPC. So thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, Joey. Um, now I'm wondering how many of the folks who have been fellows have now found ourselves with additional responsibilities as a result. Maybe they don't tell you about that. Um, I also will uh, riff on one of his points about uh, the awareness, the, the things you learn, um, and I think this is a key point of Trusted CI itself, uh, is it is building a rapport between security and what I think of as the first responders. There's a strong analogy, of course, with cybersecurity and emergency management and risk management. Um, and by building familiarity and helping the first responders, the people who will be on the scene when something happens, uh, to be more capable uh, as critical. Anyone who's taken a CPR class uh, may have an idea about that. All right, and with that, I will welcome another Californian from San Diego, uh, Melissa Cragen. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks, Rick. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm sorry that I can't be there in person. And uh, as Joey said, thanks very much to the tech team for uh, allowing us to be, uh, those of us at a distance, to be part of this today. And um, yeah, thanks for all of it. So I'm Melissa Cragen. I'm a strategist and project lead in the Research Data Services Division uh, at San Diego Supercomputer Center. And I wear a couple of hats. Um, uh, I'm part of the leadership team for the Open Storage Network, um, and I facilitate some activities uh, to build national capacity around the FAIR principles. 
And I have a small research project of my own um, that connects the data and policy space. And these, these couple of different projects will come back as I circle through um, my time uh, being, being a fellow uh, and the importance of, of the Trusted CI Fellowship for my uh, career and work uh, as I go forward. Um, also part of a new award from, from NSF, uh, one of the FAIR and Open Science RCNs, uh, it's FAIR and Machine Learning, AI Readiness and, and Reproducibility. And of course, for me, cybersecurity plays a key role uh, in thinking about how we're gonna build out infrastructure and help support the process uh, of trust uh, in systems and, and production and reuse of data. Um, I applied to Trusted CI Fellowship having had a couple of different kinds of experiences with the organization. Um, the Open Storage Network or OSN benefited from a short-term consulting engagement to help us develop our cybersecurity policy. And as a representative of the uh, West Big Data Innovation Hub, I participated on the Trusted CI Trustworthy Data Working Group. And that was a fantastic experience. I worked with people not only from Trusted CI, but uh, from a number of organizations and we worked on a survey and wrote a couple of reports. And so that was, uh, that was great to be able to participate in that. And that really, when I saw then the application come out for the fellowship, um, it really inspired me to think about next steps uh, for learning about cybersecurity, because the bulk of my work really is at the intersection of scientific production and scholarly practice, uh, cyber infrastructure, and then policy, research policy. And I, uh, uh, as Stephen mentioned, I could see that, that cybersecurity was beginning to uh, become a sort of a, a prong in the fork of the policies that were affecting science production and the ways that, that researchers have to think about, for example, writing their data management plans uh, and, and organizing spending for new IT. And so, um, so I applied uh, and um, while I'm really just starting to synthesize much uh, of what I learned this year, I'm quite sure that uh, a couple of very specific aspects uh, will play a big role uh, in my work going forward. So one is that across all the speakers, um, there was some commonalities, at least for me, in the ways that people perceive, perceive the problems, think about and analyze the problems in, so in cybersecurity um, such that sort of the, you know, most of us want to see a problem, particularly with IT, just fix it. Let's just fix it. Um, but, but the decision-making process here that I started to absorb really was about thinking through, stepping back, looking at the problem from a broader perspective and being able to think about where solutions um, might not be the, the first thing that comes to mind. Um, and so uh, that will, you know, being able to sort of think through and add that decision-making framing process into my own work will be very helpful, um, as well as I will continue to grow my understanding of the technical aspects uh, of securing research. Um, one of the most important other uh, things that I uh, uh, picked up was really, um, I was very intrigued by the tabletop exercises. And I think um, for me, this will also be another place that I uh, adapt a, a methodology really for working at that intersection of CI and practice uh, and cybersecurity uh, and policy. Um, being able to you know, help listen to stakeholders uh, about their priorities, but also um, where the speed bumps are uh, pain points and be able to consider dependencies uh, when working to develop integrated services um, uh, that we have to do to respond to the emergent federal research policies. I think, I think that tabletop exercises might be a really helpful way to, to do some of that. So I'll, I'll leave it there. I just want to say I'm, I'm really uh, honored to be part of this, uh, this cohort of fellows. Uh, amazing group of people. I learned so much from the questions uh, that, that, that we asked from every session. Um, I want to thank Diana and Tori for putting the program together and supporting us uh, and all the speakers for volunteering their time. Um, it was uh, really, you know, it's a lot of work to put a talk together and engage us for the period of time and answer our questions and even follow up with us. And so it's really appreciated. I look forward to continued participation, trusted CI activities, uh, and hope to join you uh, in person next year. And I uh, just will mention as a final point, um, I'm co-chairing with Patrick Schmitz, um, a new working group uh, from CARC, and that's on st the strategy and policy working group. 
And one of my tasks in our next meeting will be to report back on the Trusted CI, uh, the Cybersecurity Summit for this year. So thanks very much. Uh, really appreciate uh, being part of this meeting. Thank you, Melissa. Um, and thank you for getting up at 6 a.m. Uh, to join us. So uh, the tabletop exercises, uh, I attended the workshop. I've uh, um, run a few myself. And I will say it again, going back to Hannah's point about the human connection, tabletop exercises are a way to connect uh, researchers and IT staff with security before there's an actual incident. Um, this is the, you know, people who are unfamiliar with law enforcement, emergency services, they, you know, something rolls up to the house and there is an unknown there. Bridge that gap early so that the process is more smooth when there is an actual uh, incident to deal with. Um, and then uh, I am pleased to introduce uh, somebody from Chicago. I used to work for the University of Chicago, and my favorite joke is that the best part for me working for the University of Chicago was living in La Jolla. Um, so uh, with that, uh, Brian Rowland from Northwestern. Thank you, and uh, previously working at Northwestern, I too worked at University of Chicago, and um, both uh, positions have been a pleasurable experience. But uh, my name is Brian Rowland. Um, as mentioned, I work at Northwestern University. Uh, in that capacity, my role is I'm a data management specialist with uh, research computing services. Um, my primary responsibilities in that role is to help support researchers with their data management needs and to develop lines of services for uh, data management, uh, including on-prem research data storage solutions, data transfers, file sharing platforms, um, and cloud data storage solutions that we have to deploy to support their research. And uh, also working with the library to, to provide pre-award support to researchers in the form of you know, development of the data management plans. Um, similar as you heard from everybody else, my experience with the fellow program has been extremely positive. Um, when I first applied to the, to, to the, for the fellow program, I had outlined a few goals that I was uh, looking to achieve through the program. I wanted to you know, establish a strong foundational understanding of uh, key, security, uh, key security principles and best practices for data security. Because I, like you, as a common theme, uh, I too hadn't had any formalized education in cybersecurity. Um, I had some, you know, tangential knowledge just from, you know, various roles and responsibilities I had to fulfill in the past and trying to do due diligence uh, as far as making sure I was, you know, following best practices, but no formal education. And the Trusted CI framework was extremely beneficial for me because it really organized the four pillars and the, and, and the 16 uh, must that are involved with those pillars really organized how to conceptualize cybersecurity from various levels from mitigating uh, technical, technological risk with, you know, you have your various resources and controls, but most importantly to me in my position at the university is mitigating risk that derive from human behaviors. And uh, this can be achieved, you know, the mission alignment, governance, and the various, uh, the various tasks associated with that. Because in my position, I'm very research facing. I, 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 I interact a lot with the researchers and, I'm kind of, and I serve as a conduit between researchers in our research cyber infrastructure teams, our platform services teams. So it's important for me to be able to communicate with those teams, the needs of the researchers, but also keep in mind the cybersecurity, uh, cybersecurity concepts and ideas, communicate them to the researchers so they can make sure them, themselves, their teams, their labs are following best practices, especially you know, when it comes to human behaviors. You can have all the technological controls in the world, but if people are not acting appropriately, then you know that support is going to expose you to uh, additional risks. So this program has been very beneficial for me. Um, as you've heard before, we've heard from a variety of voices, first, both from within uh, the cohort of fellows and also with our speakers. And that variety of voices help you know, give greater context to cybersecurity, the depth of cybersecurity, various ways to approach it especially when you're trying to institute a, a cultural change. Because with the changing landscape and federal regulations, the changing landscape and in the, in, in the workforce and how people are working these days, remote, hybrid, uh, bring your own devices and so forth, everything's changing. So here at North Northwestern, also we're trying to change our policies, policies and standards to meet you know, this changing landscape. And, all the lessons that I've learned from the speakers helped me help 
provide me with an understanding so that I could be a voice in the room when decisions were being made, when services were being outlined. And so I was able to really personally advance my career a bit because now I was being exposed to more people within our own organization, but also, you know, help the researchers, help the researchers understand what's happening in this changing landscape. You know, sometimes people just want to stick to what they've always done because it's worked, but things are changing. Threats are changing, evolving. And so to be able to communicate with them, best practices, things they want to have, uh, have in mind to support, to help support their research and the consequence, and especially communicate the consequences of not evolving. Um, in my capacity, I work a lot of, with researchers that are involved with uh, NIH. And you know, they're deploying this new uh, data management and sharing plan and requirements. And so they have to understand what's being asked of them. They have to understand the IT environment, the cybersecurity environment at our institution, the technological controls, but also how it's gonna reflect on their research design and how they conduct, how they conduct their research, how they, how they staff their teams. Um, so this program has been very beneficial and, and I wanna thank all my fellows because without them, you know, I don't think my exposure and education wouldn't be as robust as it is. Everybody has some great questions and I wanna point out Charles. Charles is great. He's been asked, he's asked some great questions you know, if I think it's something he probably thought about it five minutes earlier and he was, he's much more of an extrovert than I am. So he had asked those, those key questions that would really hit home. Joey's been great. Um, Steven's been great. Hannah, Melissa, everybody in this cohort has been very, very supportive, um, very engaged, because I think that's very important because the engagement is what help, you know, broaden the education beside beyond some, maybe some bullet points in a PowerPoint presentation. They dug into those bullet points. They, 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 they had the speakers reach into their past experience and bring it to the forefront to help educate us and point us in the right direction and give us what I feel is a strong foundation in cybersecurity that we can, we can use to spring forward to maturing our skills, helping our research community, and also helping our own careers as well. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, and uh, the role that Brian plays and Melissa in the focus on data is obviously critical. A lot of our intellectual property, a lot of the core results of our research are in the data. We focus a lot on the computing, which are basically just transformation engines from knowledge to another form uh, of knowledge. But the data itself um, is a target. We, you know, a university would be uh, at high risk if the fundamental result of the research was not made available um, in, in an ongoing manner. Uh, and I also want to say I really do hope the Padres are taking inspiration from the Cubs this year. There's always a chance. Always a chance. But speaking uh, on that, <laughs> they, they, you know, I often view data now as a new commodity equal to old, gold, silver, whatever you want to call it. So protection of data has become increasingly important because even data that people don't think is important, you know, when you start combining it with other data and everything like that, you all of a sudden you have a rich data set that is, you know, a target for bad actors out there. So like you said, in my, in my capacity of data management, this has been very educational, very beneficial. And I take, hope to take my lessons learned back to my community as well. Thank you, Brian. Yes, the don't assume that the people that are coming after you aren't smarter than you. Um, so uh, with that, uh, I'd like to introduce Garhan Atterbury. Thank you. Uh, my name is Garen Atterbury. I'm from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Um, at least my title, as you might see on the slide, if it's up there, is Lead System Administrator. So I do come from a technical background. That's where my, my interests have lied and just the job I've been doing for many years. Um, over the past 18 years or so at the university, uh, I, I've done a bit of everything, which is possibly the thing I'm you know, happiest about. I really sincerely love my job because uh, I get to work with a wide variety of technologies, people, uh, science domains. Uh, it's fun working with bioinformaticians on one side and then digital humanities all of a sudden uh, and learning about all of their needs and you know security needs they may have. Um, oftentimes, them not knowing what security needs they may have. And uh, you know, one of the reasons for joining this fellowship or wanting to be involved was to uh, just broaden my experience uh, talking with people from a diverse background. Uh, you mentioned diversity at your intro, and certainly as you've heard from our 
the people in this cohort, we have a fairly diverse set of backgrounds. Um, and even here at the conference, uh, quite, a, quite a diverse set of uh, professions and uh, experiences to learn from, which is great. Uh, as I said, one of the things I like the most about my job is working with a wide variety of uh, areas. Um, I've had many dealings with uh, some things at the national level. Uh, the NRP is a new one, National Research Platform, Open Science Grid, um, and the USCMS uh, High Energy Physics Project with, with CERN and the LHC. Uh, maybe it's almost the opposite of what Stephen mentioned coming from uh, or, or looking at open data and open science kind of as a, oh, wow, that's a, that's a thing. Uh, maybe I hopefully didn't butcher what you were aiming for there. Um, that, that's actually the direction that I've come from over the last 18 years. So I started with, you know, open science, open data, everything, and I'm kind of learning and easing into, you know, understanding better on the enterprise IT side or maybe what some might call a more traditional uh, cybersecurity uh, regime, I guess. Um, and so that's, again, one of the things I, I really have enjoyed about this uh, program is the opportunity to speak to and learn from people who have uh, those experiences. We've had some great presentations with the, uh, you know, our weekly meetings, uh, talking with CISOs and, and other uh, types, and, and being able to better my understanding of their views, their needs, uh, and that has helped certainly within my own institution. Um, we have a separation of our research computing and our enterprise IT, which I've thoroughly enjoyed over the many years. Uh, we get along great, but we do have, you know, there, there's a, not a hard purposely set separation, it's just how it evolved. Um, and I've been, uh, as part of this program and uh, even before, it, trying to, you know, kind of better align or at least make sure the, the you know, all the players involved are, are happy and uh, doing that. And, and as part of that, uh, I think it was 2018 in Maryland, I was at a previous uh, summit uh, with our CISO, actually. And I will say that at that time, you know, we had kind of renewed some interest in between the research group and uh, the enterprise IT, and we thought, you know, we've got security, we, we have good lines of communication and all of this. Uh, and, and recently, in the past few months, we started a new data, I'll say a data management or a data uh, classification initiative. And I know there's an NSF logo above me, but it was actually uh, spurred by NIH uh, primarily. Um, but, but as part of this, we've, you know, restarted talking with researchers, the Office of Research, and our uh, enterprise IT folk, and it, it's clear that the lines of communication, I mean, they haven't gone away, but it, I've learned that it's very much necessary to keep those going continually. You can't stop, because as soon as you do, you sit back and think, oh my gosh, we're, we're horrible at security. We've, we've forgotten a lot of this. These things aren't great, uh, and so we're, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, re-engaging and uh, having more collaboration there. Um, one final thing I, I'd like to, to point out uh, was an experience I had just last week. Uh, we, we give tours a lot uh, of our data center, which is nowhere near as nice as uh, the data center we saw yesterday. Um, I'm, I'm the one that crawls under the floor, too, so I get to make fun of my own data center. <laughs> um, the, we, we give tours, and we had a group uh, from a cybersecurity and networking class uh, that was uh, part of the Career Academy, which uh, there, this is a joint venture between our local public school system, LPS, and uh, one of the community colleges in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. And they're essentially middle school or high school students, usually juniors and seniors. Um, and, and they came and we were you know, talking through a data center tour. I was pointing out where things were, literally standing next to where our 100 gig line comes into our data center a uh, little yellow, you know, single mode fiber. And I'm pointing out that, you know, yes, this is, you know, direct connection to the, the wild internet. Uh, and one of the students asked, okay, so where, you know, where are the firewalls? Where's the, where's your science DMZ? You know, expecting to see some cordon little box. And I, I pointed out the brand new NRP hardware, which we have three racks of high end GPUs, 144 GPUs. And I'm like, no, it's that wire to that switch. And they're plugged, all those servers are plugged right into that. And, and this concept of open science with hardware of that scale was baffling to them. And, it, and the instructor, I, I love the f look on his face, he had a big old grin and said, this is the only place you will hear that. Uh, that you know, <laughs> but because of course he's been teaching all of the traditional, you know, really hard enterprise security, you've got uh, tight controls and everything. And yeah, open science is certainly a different, uh, different beast. And, and so again, you know, thanks to this, or I'm 
thank you to the trusted CI group and, and the opportunity for this fellowship to uh, interact across this wide spectrum of uh, security needs and, and things. Thank you. Thank you, Garen. Yes, the, the open science aspect. Uh, some people see challenges. For those of us who are willing to throw ourselves into it, there is an opportunity. Being able to provide open, available science to the appropriate person um, and grant them the appropriate resources um, without and reduce the risk of uh, malicious actors or inadvertent um, attacks or, or inadvertent um, errors taking down your system. It, it is a challenge and it is also the key benefit, one of the great key benefits we can provide on the ET IT side to our researchers. So I do appreciate that. Um, all right, and with that, I will present uh, the final uh, Fellow of the day, Unal Tatar. Thank you, Rick. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Unal Tatar, I'm an assistant professor of cybersecurity at the State University of New York at Albany. I'm researching and uh, teaching on cybersecurity. Um, before being a faculty, uh, I worked as a uh, cybersecurity research engineer. Um, I worked in different types of projects from s s uh, secure system design. Uh, penetration testing, vulnerability analysis, and then later I most more moved towards uh, governance side of cybersecurity, risk analysis, and policies. Now, as an academic, now um, I'm working on mostly doing research and also teaching. In my research, I have three uh, lines of inquiry: cyber risk and decision making. Uh, second is critical infrastructure protection and national security, and the third one is cybersecurity workforce development. When I look at my experience with Trusted CI, I can say that uh, this fellowship contributed to improve my all uh, three research areas. When I got back to my application to this fellowship, what I was expecting, what, what were my goals? I identified three goals. The first one was learning more about uh, the cybersecurity issues and problems in research infrastructure. I have been working on cybersecurity for a long time. I carried out research in different domains of cybersecurity, such as energy, some healthcare, and also some uh, defense sector, and also maritime. But I didn't have any experience with research technology and research infrastructures, uh, cybersecurity issues and problems. So this was one, was one of my goals to learn more about this. And I can say that it was a great experience for this goal. I achieved, I believe I achieved this goal because I had a chance to uh, listen the, the issues, problems, and also the solutions already developed for research infrastructures from the people who did this. So it was an excellent experience. Um, second, my goal was networking, building my network. And uh, I started my career, as I said, as a practitioner, professional, and then moved to academia. And I always appreciate the value of researching on real world problems. So, and it's not easy for a professor to learn directly from uh, the the people who are doing the job, what are the real problems? Sometimes there's a gap. Not sometimes, mostly there's a gap between what professors are doing and what are the real problems. So as a person who values applied research and uh, addressing real world problems, that was great for me. It was like a, a retraining for me, for my research and edu uh, edu uh, education, the, 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 the teaching uh, aspects of my job. So, uh, because when you look at the, the, our cohort, my fellow fellows, we are very diverse. The speakers were very diverse to the presenters. Their background, the areas they are working on, and you need, if you need to address cybersecurity, you need to have a holistic view. You might be a technical person, you are addressing the, the technical aspects of the problem, but you need to have some awareness about the governance aspects, the regulations as well. So I think our curriculum was uh, well prepared. It covered from 
basics to some uh, advanced and then also technology to people to uh, process the governance regulations aspect. So it was a very well crafted uh, curriculum. And uh, I also want to thank uh, my fellow fellows because as I said, I learned a lot from the practitioners. I updated my knowledge, but I also learned a lot from my fellows because during the, we are coming from different backgrounds, we're doing different jobs. Their questions during the presentations and their contributions were also very enlightening to me. And also they all made all this uh, fellowship program uh, fun for all of us. So the applications are open. I recommend everyone to apply. Don't think that if this is, um, if I'm the right person to apply, you can see that this is a very diverse program. So probably you are the right person to apply for it. Don't worry. Thank you very much, Yunal. Um, let us uh, thank our panels. Um, I have a few more slides to go through, but first let's give them a round of applause, please. Um, and to take a thought um, from what Yunal said about the connections to others, I do think one of the fundamental aspects of this program is research uh, activities inherently involve collaborations and connections outside of your local organization with others. Um, and security could be an area that is, tends to be insular within its organization and within the field of security. This program, the fellowship, specifically breaks the gap um, and bridges the roles so that people who are interacting with others can be aware in the security space of what other universities are experiencing, what other researchers are going through, and how other cybersecurity professionals are solving problems. That awareness um, and the chance to know how others are doing it is critical. With that, I have a couple more slides before we get to questions. Number one, once again, the applications are open. I do encourage folks to apply. Um, it is a great chance to learn and participate um, and build your tools um, for your own selfish reasons to grow professionally and your chance to help the community. So please, uh, please do. Um, at the moment, I'm going, I am going to give out these very nice uh, desktop uh, plaques to the current fellows. Fellows that are online, um, Diana has yours and she will be mailing them to you. I have mine um, up at my eye level, no one comes into my office. So this is on a bookshelf so that I can see it and remind myself um, that I participated in a very positive experience. So let me pass these out. And with that, if I remember my slide order, please, we have about seven minutes for questions. This is where, as a moderator, I'm supposed to have a question for somebody. Uh, you don't want the oh, okay. There we go. So this is this is perhaps a cheeky question, but um, just to check. The scope of people who can apply uh, for fellowships, this would be from NSF funded institutes because I'm thinking about, you know, I'm from the EU and uh, I'm just wondering about, you know. Okay, I will. So first I'll answer the part I do know and then I'm gonna look down here for the part I don't know. Okay. Um, so for folks within the US, I can say that uh, when I applied, I think I was funded on a Caltrans, the California Transportation Department project, um, and I also work uh, on an NIH project. Um, and so I specifically was not NSF funded. I, and so I don't believe necessarily that funding is a, what your funding source is, is a strong element. What's more important is that you have support from your organization to participate um, so, you know, you, I do believe I had to submit a letter from my boss saying like, yes, Rick will be able to attend and participate and stuff like that. Now I'm going to look down here and say, so, fellows applying from the EU. I mean, strictly speaking, I should say the EU and UK, but okay. Fair enough, fair you, enough. You know what I mean. Will, we still love you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, is this one of the, Jim, do you want to take this one or? Yeah, a connection to NSF research is one of the criteria, uh, but 
it's, we balance the applications based on multiple criteria. So check out the application and, and you'll see more details there. Good question. Yeah, I do support a lot of NSF researchers with my university funding um, and stuff like that. So uh, I suspect that the NSF would like to see that they will have some benefits or return on their investment. That's a great question. All right. Any questions from online that I'm missing? Let me to the back of the room. Okay. Well, with that, thank you again for being here this morning. Let us thank our fellows, and please do consider applying. <laughs>